Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. We're going to be online. So I'm going to. Now we are online. Let me make a recording for replay. Record. All right. <clears throat> how are you? How are you doing, everybody? Very fine. Very good. Very Thank good. You. Hi, Henry. Yeah. Um, today is a special um, house festival in China. Hello. Called the Mid Autumn or Full Moon Night. Have you mm. heard of that? Yes. Yeah. Do they have the uh, sweet buns, the bean paste, bean curd buns? Um, yeah, we call that moon cake. Yeah, <laughs> not, moon cake. Not, not <laughs> Not yeah. steam the bake, bakery uh, kind of yeah. Victoria made some. Um, I wish I have a photo. Um, yeah, it, it it has a yolk in it. Yes, yeah. It's called the moon cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can get it from uh, even Costco here in in, in our oh, town. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. it, that that's called the moon cake. Yeah. The um. The date is also uh, coincidentally the national day uh, for the People's Republic of China, the 71st anniversary of uh, the PRC. So they had a big uh, long weekend, maybe a whole week of a uh, vacation there. Um, anyway, the, uh, so we uh, would like to uh, to uh, share some uh, uh, painting experience with you first, and then we'll do a painting after uh, the main master named Shen Zhou today. Um, and here is a map um, that shows the, the ruling area of the Ming Dynasty. On the north, you can see they built the Great Wall of China. Um, they rebuilt it. It was started by the first emperor of uh, the Qing um, in the 220 uh, BC. Um, but it's not well maintained. Uh, you know, so Ming actually, the, the, the Great Wall you see today is the, built by the Ming Dynasty. Uh, so Mongols was kept away from uh, the mainland um, China. And you can see two capitals here. The Ming Dynasty was founded by Zhu Yuanzhang, a, a, a leader of the rebellion against the Mongols in Nanjing, where I was born. Okay, the southern capital. This is actually the first capital. And then his son moved to Beijing, which is the uh, northern capital. Jing means capital. Nan means uh, south. Uh, Bei means north. North capital is Beijing. Mm. Beijing, you, uh, that stays as the uh, nation's capital today. But the Republic of China, which uh, went to Taiwan in uh, after uh, nine, uh, 1949, um, was captured in Nanjing. So Nanjing is a uh, center of uh, uh, cultural still. Uh, my teacher, you know, and uh, uh, my teachers are uh, our leftover. Um, from the PRC, uh, ROC, uh, Republic of China, uh, which uh, is like a southern song, you know, with this northern song. Uh, the, the, the south, the south uh, in Taiwan, I, I don't say, I would say overseas uh, China still uh, maintains the old tradition um, without interruption uh, after the revolution. But uh, uh, the, the mainland in the beginning, you know, they revolutionized everything, uh, destroyed, um, you know, kind of like uh, we um, are undergoing, you know, just uh, uh, rewrite the history, you know, that kind of thing. So the, the old uh, paintings are all treated as the uh, feudalism, you know, kind of um, back uh, <clears throat> uh, bad things, you know, so uh, in cultural revolution still. But after that, uh, um, 
recent uh, 40 years, maybe they, they uh, revival. Uh, revival. Uh, it, we, we see a great uh, nationalist, uh, uh, you know, the communists uh, uh, try to legitimize themselves around the nationalism. Uh, so the old tradition was kind of just like a Ming Dynasty sponsored the official um, the academic uh, style of the Southern Song. Uh, you know Hangzhou? You see this? <laughs> just about yeah. Uh, yeah, two, two, 200, 200 kilos maybe um, away from Nanjing. It's about uh, two hours by train, I think, nowadays. Maybe one hour, I don't know, by bullet train. So uh, this is, Hangzhou is uh, the southern capital of uh, Song, uh, Southern Song, right? Uh, it, it, starting uh, from Song, uh, it, it became a uh, cultural and uh, um, economic center. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the high-tech companies still, uh, you know, captured uh, there, like Alibaba. Uh, uh, anyway, so it's an economic center. And also Shanghai um, area. It, Shanghai was a modern port, but uh, Ming, Ming Dynasty, there's a place called Suzhou. It's uh, uh, a little north of Shang, Shanghai, uh, about uh, 40 minutes by train, I think. Uh, it's uh, on the Yangtze River. So this is a big uh, blue line. This is Yangtze River. Um, so from Nanjing to Shanghai, in between somewhere, it's a Suzhou and a Wuxi, you know, Nizan was uh, born in Wuxi and uh, Shenzhou was born in Suzhou. Suzhou uh, is an uh, ancient state, Wu, in the warring state period before the, uh, the uh, unification of China in two, uh, 220 BC. Um, and Hangzhou was the state of Yue. So my father was born in this area, uh, just a little uh, suburb of Hangzhou. But Shaoxing is a very cultural town as well. And uh, uh, so I, I call myself the, the ancient Yue uh, descendant, uh, descendant from the Yue state. And Shenzhou is a Wu state. So we, we are neighboring state. And we, we speak the same dialect in this area. It's, it's called Shanghai Lis. It's like New Yorkers uh, you know, accent. Uh, it's a big, um, I mean, most advanced cultural and economic uh, areas still today in this uh, Yangtze Delta area. And the other uh, is Guangzhou, you know, the uh, Southern China, Hong Kong, this, uh, this area. Um, Beijing, of course, is the capital. And you see Wuhan, Chengdu, these are our big uh, provincial ca uh, capital cities as uh, seen on this map. So um, we're talking about uh, women today is uh, uh, with the Zhe uh, school. Hangzhou is the uh, Zhejiang province. So the style is called the Zhe. Zhe um, school that we um, talked about Nan Ying, the late uh, Ming Dynasty master. Uh, actually, Nan Ying, Nan Ying was a, a, a not a personal student. I think he was uh, influenced by Shenzhou because he, he lived actually uh, after Shenzhou. And uh, let's see, we talk about Shenzhou. He, he uh, was uh, born in 1427 um, and died 1509. He lived with, uh, uh, 80 year, 81 years old. And he was a uh, uh, grandson of, uh, um, his, his grandfather was uh, uh, a friend of Wang Meng, one of the four um, masters of Yuan dynasty, if you recall. Uh, his hometown is in the same area where Nizan, uh, Huang Gong Wang, uh, there's uh, four uh, masters and Wu Zhen, uh, four masters of Yuan uh, uh, lived. So he, his family, um, his father and uncle are both uh, uh, literary um, official scholar, amateur painters, you know, uh, 
literary uh, scholars and uh, uh, artists, I would say. They, they are also collectors of ancient uh, uh, paintings and uh, uh, cultural relics, you know, that kind of. Um, so he was influenced by his uh, uh, father. He, he, his, his teacher was uh, uh, also his father's teacher. Uh, one is Du Chong or Deng, uh, Du Gu Kuang, uh, and uh, um, the other is uh, uh, Wu Kuan. Um, both are his father's teacher as well. So he, he learned very well from uh, uh, his teachers and uh, his uh, um, father and grandfathers, uh, the style of the Yuan literati style. So he developed into his own uh, eventually. Um, by the way, Shen Zhou was uh, the artist I started with when I studied classic uh, Chinese brush uh, painting, uh, the, the landscape painting from uh, my teacher Han Shaoying. If you look at uh, this, this uh, painting here on my table, um, <clears throat> this is a, a yeah, we call it a um, winter landscape or with bare tree branches, right? Um, this, this uh, style is after Shen, Shen Shitian. Shen Zhou um, is uh, known by his style name, Shitian, meaning uh, stone field. So we call him Shen Shitian. And my teacher wrote this uh, inscription saying, Shen Shitian, after Du Gu Kuang, uh, learned from Du, du Gu Kuang. Um, du Gu Kuang is his uh, teacher, his father's teacher. So du. Uh, his, this is his, his uh, style name, De Yi Zhibi. Um, he, he, he gained the, the two um, idea, or uh, Yi means uh, idea, or mean, mint, or, uh, you know, uh, intent, that kind of, uh, not just the, the uh, traces, you know, we, we call it, learned the, the, his teacher's uh, mind and um, the brushwork of his teacher's mind, something like that. Zhi means uh, of, B means brush strokes. Huh? Oh, you cannot see the, the, the description. Yeah, this is my teacher. I, I wasn't uh, really, um, uh, this, was, this was done in early 80s. Uh, I was studied. Shen Zhou uh, in my uh, art, uh, art, historic uh, art class. I think it's a class uh, for, it's called Connoisseur uh, of Ancient uh, Chinese brushwork, uh, painting and calligraphy, I think. So I asked my teacher to demo uh, the brushwork of uh, Shen Zhou. Uh, this was in the year of monkey, maybe 79 or something, I, 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 I can recall, uh, it could be 78, seven, yeah, uh, in the autumn, and I requested, and my teacher um, responded with this. So uh, you can see this is a, a Shen Zhou style. Uh, he used a very stiff brush, something uh, we call the, bamboo and orchid brush, um, quite um, like a mop shift, you know, this kind of, um, and uh, you can see this, these strokes are all uh, tip-centered stroke, tip-centered stroke means uh, hold the brush like this, okay, and he, he showed me how to do the, uh, the trees, this, uh, in separate class. So this is um, this is the illustrate the diagram he draw. Uh, yes, it's, it's basically um, I showed you the leaves that he did uh, uh, directly after the the, the master seed garden menu painting the lesson one, right? Uh, this uh, this basically from that book uh, he did with his his own. Um, 
much work. And he had the um, secret here to share with, with me uh, and I'll share with you. Um, he says, you know, you start from uh, uh, the trunk, left and then le uh, right, you know. So it, it goes from the, where the st split usually, and then down and then this side. Um, and he says all the, the bushes uh, or the um, trees um, is derived from this upside down character Ji. Uh, I think I mentioned it before. If you look at this character from upside down, uh, it's like this. <clears throat> this is the, the beginning shape of uh, the branches and you can develop along this line, that means that there are four strokes. One, two, three, four. And, you know, you always derive one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I'll, I'll demo that. And so you, the main main branch also, you know, four, uh, four branches, four uh, directions. And then uh, the, the shape is like a lu jiao, meaning the stack horn. We mentioned that, right? This is the, you can uh, try this one if you want, you know, the, the four strokes. This is, this is the basic uh, uh, form and you can identify them. So when you paint a, a tree like this, you, when you copy, you try to do it in group of four. That's, that's the idea. So you don't do it one by one. Uh, you don't count it yourself. It, you just like it, orchid leaves, you know, you know the, the, they are all based on three, a group of three, cluster of three. So you do it in cluster of four. You just, when you add um, a, a, a branch, you just do it four, da, 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 you know. Um, some branches are um, from top down, most of them, uh, most of the tricks, um, but the, uh, some, of, some, some of them could be uh, from bottom up, like the way it grows. But there are a lot of, uh, so this section, so this is uh, goes just pouring and some just um, from top down, from in, outside in. I think that's the, my memory of the, this lesson I took 40 years ago, I think, <laughs> maybe 35, 30, uh, yeah, almost 40 years, 40, 41 could be. Uh, okay, this is a complete painting. He didn't sign it. It's obviously is a is a is a demo uh, in one of the other class. Uh, with uh, I I spent a lot of time practice this uh, this trees after Shenzhou, um, Shen 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 Shitian, um, and the, the, there are some other uh, trees. This is called uh, the uh, claw of a, a crab, crab claw branches. It's just upside down and you can see it's uh, still at four, four strokes. And you know, he, 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 you can even see the connection between the strokes. So it goes like, uh, you know, one, two. So when you, when you um, read the, the uh, painting, um, try to replay this kind of uh, brush work, try to follow the sequence in, in, the, uh, in your mind to reprodu re reproduce the, the action of the brush work, not just to uh, you know, treat them as like a, uh, a shape, a form, you know, it's just copied. You, you copy the action, not, not the trace. That would be, you know, just like calligraphy, you, 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 you follow the uh, a set of strokes, not just one by one. I see uh, some students have problem with the dot. The uh, um, last night uh, the uh, the masters masters also you know, comes in in group of uh, uh, in groups, not just uh, you. Yeah, some overlap, but but he he uh, my teacher had another influence uh, by Shi Tao. So this, this is actually more like a Shi Tao stone uh, rock. So I will um, show you later again when we talk about Shi Tao. Yeah. 
Um, let me I just uh, start the demo anyway. So uh, there's a lot to learn by just looking at the, the paintings, but if you never try, uh, you, you can never, uh, it, it, will, it will never become your, uh, yours, you know. So you have to, you have to learn by first hand uh, the brush and ink, we call it, the techniques summarized into two words, the brush and ink. Uh, so there's, uh, so these two are the same brush work, it's a different ink, the ink and the brush. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I did this painting in, on this uh, occasion of the form for the you know full moon festival, but I did a little earlier, so the moon was not uh, completely rounded. I'm I, I'm going to make it up today, and uh, I saw there's a moon here somewhere in this. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take this example to finish my. My my moon here. This this is how uh, the traditional landscape uh, paints the moon. So you you actually you save it. You you don't paint the moon. You just uh, do the sky around it. Okay. Let me see. Okay. And here's the moon. I can I I did a little crescent. You can maybe zoom to see it. Let me show you how how to um, make it a, into a form. So first of all, I would use uh, some uh, some. Uh, uh, let's see. He didn't use any any um, color because I started to use a, a gouache. I'm going to use a little. I just use this handy one. So I got some gouache from this blot. Uh, <clears throat> and you can use it on the back of this uh, uh, mulberry paper. If it's a sized paper, you, 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 it won't work because it's not going to show through. <clears throat> so I just paint this like this. So I just make up the whole moon. Okay. And that's it, All right? You can see the, the color is kind of uh, strong, but because it's on the back, you will fade out, uh, away a little bit. And you can, you can soften the edge with some water. I had some yellow on the, on the crescent, so that's okay. It's, it's a little yellow on the left, lower left. You don't have to be very round. See, this is a very casual. The, the circle, the, the anzo, he did just one stroke, you know. And then he, he used the light ink to make it, uh, to, to uh, um, cut in a little bit to, but still it's between round and the square. You can see this square, like almost in this corner, right? And I'm going to use a little, a little bit, just a little bit, because I have a um, mountain here. So I'm going to kind of uh, show a little bit, a little bit, let me see, try to match that color to extend the, the mountain. Oops, it's a little bit too green. I don't know why, maybe you got some. Okay. I already signed and entitled it. Um, maybe you saw this on, on Facebook already. I can still work on it. So um, 
a penny is a is a living thing. It has its own, you know, life. It evolves over time, and uh, you can you can write new uh, inscriptions on it. You can uh, you can let's just make it uh, disappear. I just got little tiny um, leftover. I washed this dish, but not completely. There's some a bit of light uh, of a color. That's that's how I, how much I need. I think. So I got some indigo here, indigo here. So you can see, there's not much color you need to color to to bring color to the to the painting. Right? Okay, uh, because you're seeing the the sh the sh uh, water against the uh, black padding. Um, after it dries, it, it it actually has nothing. Sometimes I just shape it with uh, clean water, and then I go in with a dry brush with a little bit color, and I I kind of add color without too much uh, brush uh, hard line and hard stroke. You know that that's. Um, that's how it works. I think. You have learned this before in Southern Song style, right? And this one is done uh, with with a, a large brush, and then uh, because the, the the bottom of the brush is water, so you can see some uh, soft lines. But he doesn't care, you know. The uh, it it's all it's like Shen Zhou's uh, painting. It it's all the um, gesture of the painting. This, these lines are just uh, um, <coughs> traces of uh, the, uh, the, the brush dance. And <laughs> Shen Zhou has this uh, uh, essay, very long essay written on one of his uh, famous painting called uh, Sitting uh, in the Night, right? Or translated in, into English as a night visual. Do you have a chance to read that article? I translated, I, mean, I copied from uh, the book, uh, Images of the Mind. Um, yeah, he, he's a good writer, poet. He writes in extensively on the painting, his uh, feelings, his uh, reflections, uh, his uh, moment of Zen, uh, enlightenment. I think that was an enlightenment night. He was, it was a sleepless night. He got, get up, he got up and uh, um, sitting quietly in a very cold winter night uh, uh, with a flicking uh, candle light. And he, he painted this painting I wrote. Oh, this is the one. And uh, okay, if you had time, you can go back to the email I sent with the translation. But basically, his experience was uh, in the quietness um, sitting, quite uh, sitting. Um, meditation, uh, he's, he start to hear sound that he um, was never heard, realized, you know, uh, before, and start to see colors he didn't uh, realize uh, before on his paintings, uh, on, you know, around him. So um, he's, he said, uh, instead of using your you, you know, your eyes to observe, to learn, you should really um, enter this state of mind that uh, is called a quiet sense, quiet sense. Um, so his painting, um, his favorite painter is Ni Zai, Ni Yuning, uh, one of the four Yuan masters. So uh, Ni Yuning's painting is very quiet, quiet sense, right? There's the, it's very, um, peaceful, tranquil. So um, when you have that kind of uh, mind, you can listen to, you can hear the sound of the brush. Uh, you can, the brush tip become your fingertip, you know, like you have very sensitive, sensitive to the touch. So there's touching, um, the senses of touching is more important than your eyes, I think. That's, and then your 
the voice of a brush on the paper. So you probably should um, do it in a quiet night, like Shenzhou, you know, to, to hear the sound, the rhythm of the brush. Um, but today I, I always show you the uh, importance of this, um, this approach. Because he said in his uh, conclusion that he will apply this um, um, this experience to all his later later learning in the investigation of uh, things. You know, um, in 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 the early period of uh, Chinese painting, uh, especially the Song Dynasty, the uh, try to to learn from nature, right? Learn from nature in the art. In Shenzhou's painting, uh, he tried to identify with the rocks and trees and the objects. Um, he became nature in James Cahill's uh, words. I wish you, I wish you understand this. Um, so there's no distinction, just like a uh, bronze, you know, there's no distinction of uh, uh, butterfly and bronze, right? It's become one. Um, okay, what, what paper to use? Um, I would use uh, mulberry paper, either number one or number two, semi-sized consider as oh semi-sized shuan um let's let's see some paintings in detail okay let me share this um i tried to teach you the doll not just techniques i realized that if you copy if i try to show you how to dot his mustache, I will never be able to do that. You will never be to do that. You have to learn the action of that. And the, the only way to learn is to read the, the originals. That's why that's, uh, I start with uh, always with this uh, uh, reading. So uh, here, here's the calligraphy of his, uh, oops, yes. Uh, if, if you look at his dots here, it's the same kind of stroke. And there are how, how many dots here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? My, my, my father taught me this. Uh, three dots of water, one slant, three uh, sparrows, and then guji guji gua. And there's Da, da means big, another dot here. And this, is, this means the stream. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so if you can do this dot with this character, you should have no problem uh, with the mass dots later. And uh, if you can do a bone stroke like this in this uh, character mountain, uh, you should you should be able to draw the mountain and the rock outline or the tree trunk. This is uh, autumn, so I, I want to impress you with how um, his calligraphy look. He he is a master of calligraphy. A uh, calligraphy, uh, his styles after the um, song master Huang uh, Huang Pingjian. Uh, he. Uh, with a long, ex expressive slant and the uh, press. Yeah, that's, uh, we call it a uh, long beard and uh, uh, like a big cliff, you know, like big weapon kind of, very sharp, very uh, powerful. But you can see all the power. Um, it's not like a, a swift, swift stroke, like you just slip on top of, uh, it, it has to deliver the power from here, the beginning, all the way to the end and for, uh, beyond. So that's his uh, style. And he applied this uh, 
calligraphy stroke to all of his uh, paintings. I think uh, he, although in, in this painting, he, he combined all four masters of the Yuan Dynasty. This is Ni Yunming. This section is Ni Yunming. I don't know why it's, it doesn't load. Let's see. I think it just, just cut off. Oops, let me see. Let me reload it. Um, what unifies his uh, uh, copy is his signature style, you know, his uh, calligraphy. Um, I think my, my line is slow, so I cannot really show on this side. Let's change uh, into this static side already. Uh, I mean, my uh, screenshots, I prepared for this. So I have scare, uh, screenshots, I think I can show you a lot. Uh, sorry about uh, technique problems here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Okay, uh, so this is the first part is a Ni Yuning style. Uh, if we enlarge it, you could, you see uh, his stroke is his. So um, very certain. That is why um, the academic um, students today start to learn their uh, classic painting from Shenzhou uh, because this is very clear uh, to him, uh, to them to, to learn. You can count the strokes, you know, each very certain, uh, very sure strokes. And this section is after Huang Gongwang, you know, the Fuchun River painting we explored. It's called the Pima Long. Uh, Five, five fibers of uh, untangled uh, hemp rope, um, hemp, hemp stroke, yeah. And this is also Huang Gong ones. And then we're getting into the um, master of uh, uh, Wu Zhen, you know, Huang Wang Wu Yi. Oh, yeah, the previous one was uh, Huang, Huang, I think, Wang. <laughs> kind of hard to distinguish sometimes. Um, yeah, this is a little different than um, yeah, this one. Not not exactly uh, the same as uh, the Huang is Wang. Wang Meng, he does the um, untangled uh, hemp. You can see a little twist, this little twist. And Shenzhou learned a lot from this uh, artist because he, he was, his grandfather was a friend of Wang Meng. Okay. And the, uh, this part is Wu Zhen, you know, the, uh, the pine tree with, uh, on the cliff with it. That, that artist who, who does a uh, very uh, moist, but Shenzhou does not really use that much um, water. Uh, but his, his brushwork, has much to do with uh, Wu Zhen. His, his, uh, especially his dots, his mass dots, is, um, we call it Mei Hua Dian, the plum blossom. Uh, they could be, you know, five or three, a group. And um, so you, you could be overlap. Uh, notice where the, the dots are put. And also, please notice the ink. Um, the dark dots on light rock. If you do the rock in dark, then there's no reason, you, you, you know, no way you can, you can make the same con contrast. It's not going to work the same. So save the, the darkest for the dots. Don't use any, any dark. And he, he, he exaggerated that. He doesn't even put any shaping or not, let alone uh, washing there. So don't wash. <laughs> don't do any wash. If you like to wash, just you know, scramble or with dry brush, a little bit uh, dry brush there. You know, that's uh, that's how much you need actually for this uh, calligraphy work. It's literary style. <clears throat> uh, after you learn this, you you really uh, know why they don't like Zen painting because it looks so uneducated. I'm sorry to say that. 
And this is one month's uh, style with uh, entangled uh, hemp. So uh, literary tradition emphasizes that each stroke has its uh, inspirational source. You could identify that. And just yesterday, we, we learned um, a master copy class from a Western watercolor painting. Um, they do the same thing. You know, my teacher, uh, Robert, uh, said he copied uh, like crazy all the masters, J.W. Turner, John Sar a single sergeant, um, you know, all the American masters, uh, uh, Paul Cezanne, American, uh, uh, French artist. So you, you, can, you copy anybody you admire. That's how you learn in art. If you don't copy, you really um, to learn by, by watching, by looking, by read books. No, St. Joe said in his article, read that article again, I translated uh, uh, with the email I sent to you and also on the website. Uh, he read all the books and then, but you know, if you don't read books, you, you may not have that sudden alignment, uh, by the way. So you read the books, then you, you um, go back to your heart and uh, feel your, your hand, feel the brush, feel the, the, the uh, tip of the brush. Um, so let me do it. Um, don't stare at uh, the painting uh, or, you know, you, you, you can take your reading glass away and just paint with your sixth sense, <laughs> your heart, your mind, if you will. Okay, let's uh, start from, uh, always start from the, the medium, the medium. Uh, um, ink, right? I tried to do it with a blurry vision today. Ah, oh, this is hard. Okay. Uh, which one we, we, we need to, to study? Uh, I got uh, two options. One is uh, his early work. We call it uh, uh, small qing lü. Small qing lü means uh, little, um, little green and uh, Blue, blue and the green landscape, um, and with a more uh, detailed, elaborated style. And you can see even the falling petals on the on the uh, ground. And I love this painting. I I've copied. Oh, I've copied so many of them. Let me see. I sold that one actually to a friend. I know who, who, the collector is in Japan right now. Otherwise, I will ask a picture of the scroll. Um, and I did that on, on a shikishi board like this. Uh, let me show you what I have got here. It's a, a, like this size, you know, like this size. This, this is from the same um, album, uh, maybe called the uh, Oyo, or something like a, uh, traveling in the room. Traveling on in the bed, or something like that. You know the idea of a painting landscape, right? Uh, uh, yeah, this is another example that uh, by a copy of Shenzhou in the uh, twelve years ago. I think I did this. I was forty-eight. It was a year of a pick, and the, this is also uh, my copy of Shenzhou's uh, urban leaf. Okay, as a little bit color, autumn color, basically. Um, he, he, he likes color, so, um, so we'll use a little bit of color with ink maybe today. Um, actually, this is a, a uh, um, parody. It's a modern interpretation of his uh, famous painting. That's our second option. Um, don't worry, we have enough time to do the, these paintings. Let me just give you some background. Oops. Okay, here's the detail of this. And you can see the, uh, it's called the po point on the mountain in English. If you look, uh, if you search St. Joe on, on um, internet, you, this painting will pop up most like, but you, do you notice the difference of this painting? 
and uh, the original. I, I did this on a fan, on a, a silk fan. And this is the original. Okay. And the, yeah, the detail is, uh, uh, I changed the point uh, to a car uh, with my life experience of uh, driving on top of the mountain, not walking on top of the to, uh, mountain. And I adapted a little bit into the, the round shape or the square shape by uh, moving the mountain in front in the, on the left on the, uh, to the top. Um, how do you like that? And basically it's a um, recreation of the you know, after Shenzhou. So you, you can move around uh, or you can borrow uh, different uh, paintings to do, uh, to compose. That's the, that's the painting I would do. Okay. And here's another painting. Uh, I think it's a Shenzhou, I'm not sure, but it looks like Shenzhou's uh, trees. Is it? And the rocks also. Um, that's uh, autumn or winter uh, trees, yeah. Okay. So I've done a lot of uh, Shenzhou's copy. Uh, if you if you join the class from middle, this is the, the, the class to jump in you know, right away because this is how I started, you know, just like uh, although we 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 uh, follow yes. Any questions, comments? No, no. I was just interested in the color, but not next time. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, the color one. Oh, I, I I'll try to do both. We can Henry? do it in twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, Henry, uh, there's a paper called Gen P or Gen Pi. Is that is that what you would call the sized or unsized? Gen Pi. Gen Pi. J I N P I. Oh, Gen P. Gen P is a uh, 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 unsized. Unsized, okay. Yeah, Jinpi. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a red star, red star shine. It's also called Jinpi. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, we have I that. I'm yeah. old, and I thought well, I didn't know whether we could use that for this. You can use that. Uh, it's more challenge though. I use semi size, semi okay. size. Uh, you can see why because it is it, it does not uh, um, does not bleed. Okay. Let me... Let me let me zoom in a little bit. I tried to finish this uh, before um, eleven, for sure. Then we may have time to do that another one because he did it pretty fast. I know that. Um, so we we will start from the. You can start from the tree if you want, uh, but you know better to start the composition, right? You could do a little sketch if you will to study the. We we have a, a center line. Uh, this is the open leaves, right? It's like this, it's folding line. So you, you can basically uh, at least fold it like that. And then um, you, you don't have to exactly copy because the proportion may be uh, not the same, but we, we see there's a, a slope goes like that. There's some, um, some, some uh, wave, you know, not a straight line. You can you can do it with a um, dry brush. Just dry the, the bottom of the brush. I use a big brush because I don't I don't want to go back always to reload. But you can use the this brush, the uh, mustard brush, if you like to go smaller. Let me show you. And see, I push the brush, and you can start to uh, do the shaping at the same time. Because the color I use are the same, um, I call it color, the ink. And look at the stroke, he does it uh, almost like a, the uh, X cut. So it starts like, a, um, it starts like, a, like this, like a dot and then kick, right? This is the, the X cut. Um, he, he used the X cut stroke um, 
with the with the um, structure of a uh, hemp, okay. And I, I push, I push the brush either up or or um, down. Maria, I have a question on yeah. the hand, right? So yeah. normally the hand you use a side stroke or you use a center point stroke. For Shenzhou, for Shenzhou is a center point, but. Um, then that means the, the tip stays on the, in the center, but it doesn't mean you have to hold the brush always like that. You can okay. you can you can hold the brush like this, but you you just use the tip. That's why I chose you this because if I use a small brush, I kind of cheat. Uh, but if I use the, this brush, you can really see how much I use. I, I really want to show you. I only use the tip of the brush. You can use a large brush if you like. Um, then you know you're forced not not to use the site, right? So, but it's quite a dry, quite a dry. That's um, so for the hemp. Uh, yeah. Hemp. You normally use dry, or you normally use wet or mellow. Okay. His his. Uh, we don't use the word dry or wet. Uh, he he used the he favored the, the taste of mal or uh, coarse. I think mal means uh, um, in, in Western word would be uh, would be uh, soft, okay. uh -huh. uh, but not uh, you know not, not hard. Yes, and mal means uh, uh, fuzzy. Mal okay. instead of a smooth or shiny or so slick. It's a little dry, right? Not that yeah, dry, mal, but a little dry. Uh, mal, yeah, mal means a very, uh, yeah, you can get mal easily with dry brush, not, uh, yeah, this is called mal. And tang, tang means uh, dry, yeah, tang and mal. And mm -hmm. he also favor uh, xu, xu means uh, vacant. Okay. Uh, I also translated a poem he, he wrote on the uh, other painting called uh, uh, walk with the uh, staff, and he he says his tree, the trees and the bamboos uh, are also um, empty and vacant, you know. So I I try to paint like his his, his uh, old age. He has not good vision anymore, but he he had this kind of uh, um, hand. How do, muscle memory, muscle memory. That, that, that's the best word I found. Yeah, just you have to develop this muscle memory. Um, let me enlarge it, although I cannot see. I wish you can see what I'm working on. So this, this part is the, the kind of center of the painting. Um, a lot of people start from the tree. Um, it's different school. I uh, really don't, don't know where he exactly uh, started, but uh, I think it's important to to have the tree in the in the right place and the size in the whole composition because it's a focal point, one of the center of uh, it, other than the, the figure, right? So this is almost here in, in the heights. So let me just dot that line, and then I, I just draw this tree. <clears throat> you can use um, uh, loss and the font. You know, you can combine strokes. Not, notice I, I twisted the brush very, very often. Um, so it, it keeps, kind of, also you use, um, the stroke to correct, to let the brush stay um, pointed. You know, that's, that's the, the uh, idea. And remember the, the character, the four character, um, the, I mean, the, the character of four strokes, jie, right? The, here, here is the jie. So I start from there. 
And I use the very sharp point of this brush. You can, you can add a little uh, line to indicate the um, bark, if you want. OK. And uh, I can finish this one first, and then we continue the second one. I think that's uh, uh, what I would do here. So this, this stroke is called a big confused dots, um, but not so big. We, we can make it simple and just do it big, bigger, maybe. And it's, a, it's a, like a uh, me dots. He, he likes me, by the way. And he, he had a painting called uh, not Huang, not me in between, something in between, you know. He suggested uh, he, he learned he, he likes me, but not exactly horizontal, but not Huang. Uh, Huang is a very narrow kind of horizontal uh, version of a me. Uh, so I, you know, I don't really count uh, each dot and each stroke. I, I, I generally copy his uh, composition and uh, his idea of uh, um, the trees. And I have another tree, which is on the left side. Um, Goodbye. You know what? I don't know. Do you know what the rest of the schedule is? Okay, let me mute you guys. Okay. Okay. She should be coming because it's the first of the month. She came yesterday, the day before yesterday. Okay, the next tree on the on the right side is a um, relatively light. Um, we we don't uh, have to indicate what kind of dot or etc. But it's a, it's a kind of uh, confused dots. I would say um, you can use uh, just add water to the brush. You know, just uh, add water, and then because if I just dig a little water on the tip. It's very um, light to start, and it will get lighter. I mean, a little darker ender. I know that, right? So I just kind of give some soft. So that creates a light and a dark contrast. Now I, I use uh, a dry the brush again, and I use pure ink. Uh, I draw a little branch maybe behind this one somehow. And just a little dark in, in the, uh, it, it could be, I don't have room for the double line, but I would add that if, if later possible. And then I just draw the top of that tree going behind this. <clears throat> so there is a density here overlapping. Um, and then I draw some uh, uh, downward almost horn kind of, I know there, there are four strokes. I don't even need to count. I just generally know this, this um, composition that there's a branch there. There's, and I concentrate more on my own painting. So the, you can have little branch in between. Okay. And that's it. You know, if you missed some you know, branches out there, you don't have to look at your own painting. You don't need to copy each stroke, and you will end up a better, better copy. You know, so on on this side, there is a, a little we call it moss moss footprint kind of dot or paper paper dots. It's a rounded. This is a, it's better to do it. To, you know, if you have a smaller brush, you can dot it with a, uh, with moss dots. Brush. And if it's too dark, you can blot it a little bit. And you just use Henry, a, you said that the master, you need to make a, a turn, right? But uh, when I see you dotted, you just uh, point it. That's it, isn't it? Or, you, you know, okay. your yeah, I think action the, is. Yeah, look at the, the pick the large calligraphy dots. And if I uh, do it, it's a, it's a like that. So there's there, there's a little to control the shape. You you need to feel the feel the center. So it's not 
you 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 can control the split. If you don't do anything with your wrist or your finger, if you just do it like this, it's possible, but it's kind of hard. You, yeah, it, it might still work, provided that you use enough ink. So it's like dropping, deliver. You know, you you don't have to really manipulate that. You don't have to. You sometimes. Uh, when, when the brush goes dry, I can still do it slowly and I just I just draw this, right? I can also, in the beginning, you know, when the brush is full of ink, you can just um, dot it. Oh, sorry, it, it's semi-sized, see it passing through the, the paper, I forgot. <clears throat> okay, okay, now um, it's light. So, but, you can you you don't have to follow the sequence of the because the artist may go the first layer then add the light layer after it uh, just fill in the, the blanks so if you just finish all in one section you kind of lose the whole picture so maybe we should do the uh, <clears throat> uh, just you know start from from uh, everywhere <laughs> not just finish one little corner and then go to the other corner, not like that. So you try to understand the uh, the relationship between those, because sometimes you, because the, uh, the randomness of the, 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 the brushwork, you know, you may lose some uh, proportion. It's okay, just adjust it, you know, you, you don't have to copy exactly what what's on the the masterpiece? Let me see if I okay. I I I, I got misleading because the picture didn't show the bottom. Okay, so I have to in the, another class, you said uh, we should start from the tree, right? You give us an order where to start, right? So um, on this, it's what's, a, yeah, good student to know the exceptions. Yeah, okay. I teach you the the um, the principles, but a good student know the exceptions. Like I said, <laughs> got it. Thank you. You have to think why, um, but you know the the what's on in the front should go first, right? Like uh, here, definitely this this pine tree should be done before the cliff behind. Otherwise, uh, you have to avoid to, to make all the, the voids, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, just for convenience, you know, you know that the, um, what's convenient, you know. So this, this is a cliff. The little, little, um, little rocks are not important as the the main composition. So I, I, I kind of control the, the whole um, pile of rock here um, in, you know, in relationship to this, um, the main uh, slope, but the, this one is kind of soft and it's just a blurred part, not in the focus, right? So um, there might be something in this value. I, I, I sense some passage maybe. I don't see. Let me just close that. So this this pile is uh, uh, is in the center, and it's kind of dark, darkest group of the rock. Maybe see this this gesture of tree is like a Yin Ke Song, the welcoming uh, guest tree in Huangshan. That's a, a, a um, you know each tree in, in in the famous mountain has the names. So. It, it welcoming guest tree is a Yin Ke Song, a very famous uh, thousand year old tree. Maybe Shen Zhou has uh, been there. And uh, Shen Zhou maybe not. <laughs> Another artist, Shi Tao, must. Shi Tao is a Huangshan school master. We talked about later in 17th century. This is uh, six, uh, 16th century. 15 to 16, 15 to 16th century. He died in yeah, 16th century, early 16th century, right? Okay, 
So this, see, he, he, he gets very rough, um, not re really detailed like the, the other painting uh, does, the, the flower painting. Um, and this, this tree is called, uh, what, what we learned last time, I forgot, the Nizan, uh, the red, uh, red wood. Is that what is? That kind of uh, san, shan, shan shu, right? Cypress. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, cypress or redwood, that kind of you know, straight, straight line. You know, don't really, because I, I didn't wear my, my glasses. Let me show you my face. Maybe I should, you don't need to see my, yeah. Uh, so I, I paint with a blurry eye. <laughs> I try to concentrate on the big picture, I see. So you squint, you squint, yeah, yeah, you squint a lot. You just see the, the large picture instead of the little ones, right? So there, there are some uh, secondary groups. This is, uh, but within this group, there's a, a tall one, like the host and guest, you know. And this is uh, um, the other tree, you know, the with various trees. So that doesn't uh, really matter what kind of tree is that. Is it, we use a uh, small confused dots, meaning uh, as you like, you know, random. And uh, some rock behind the here is okay. And now I, I need to draw this building. This is a little challenge part maybe for, if you're not familiar with the temples. Um, you can draw a little sketch if you want. Um, but before that, I, I, I'll do this, uh, just make, make our work easier. We just paint the trees in the front. So you don't have to do the whole building behind. And this tree goes, uh, this is a little farther, so it should be lighter. Right. And try to paint this, the trunk with uh, some zigzag movement, you know, but maintain the gravity. And uh, this one goes a little linked, yeah. And uh, the overlap, the, the arms, one long, one short, not symmetrical. And these two almost touching each other, this uh, tree form a, a nice uh, arch. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, this is a, a little dry tree there. So let me just put a, I'm using this uh, calligraphy brush, the Wang Xizhi calligraphy brush, incidentally. Um, uh, yeah, for the trees, maybe a smaller brush because uh, you, you really want to have a little detail kind of. Uh, this tree is, is almost like, a, you know, Fu Bao Shi style, it's split. You can split the brush, uh, but still uh, keep the, use the partial split brush, maybe the tip of a, a partial split brush to do the tip stroke the, for the needles. Yeah, just to leave the little space under, uh, between the trunk, the the branch and the, the foliage. If you uh, take uh, the, the lesson from uh, uh, Wei Li, Wei Zixi's daughter in Nanjing, she uh, taught lesson in Nanjing uh, for us. And she, she, she does a, a good you know, explanation about the pine, like this, uh, the, the line between the, uh, the space between the, the foliage and the, the um, needle, leave a little space. Basically they are all on top, you know, not go under. Usually that's the characteristic of the pine crown. You know, you can, you can see where I did. Okay, <clears throat> this is the pines. Now I draw this uh, uh, temple, this, you could simplify it maybe if you want, just. Um, just 
the roof that some thing between the second roof is smaller and just goes behind that the, the yeah the column some gate kind of and there is a big gate of the temple in the front this is the entrance Where is suggestive? I didn't wear my glasses. You see, I, I really cannot really see the details. And uh, there's something in there, just a suggestion. So that's that's about it. And uh, uh, so the tun and the, the, the shaping and the outline is done in the same uh, step. But you do the outline always first, right? And notice the, the, uh, the, th the three dimensions, the three phases of the rock. And uh, he, would, he would do this like a very slow and the stop at the end of the, the, the pima. So it's not like a full pi, like a ch 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 it, he, he started like a full pi, but end like a pima, it, it's pressed, pressed down to kind of form a, and you can combine short ones to make it just like a wuzhen does, you know, make it look like a huang gong wang does. Uh, it, it's like a combined short or dry ones to form long ones. And you can, you can put a um, light in, in, between, in between the uh, dark, the, I mean, darker lines to add uh, the shaping. So you don't need to, the shading, you don't need to wash the whole thing. You just fill in some blanks with the light ink, you know, like that. And we'll do the, do it more. So let's concentrate on the whole thing. Uh, and see my sh shading is actually uh, used to squeeze out the, uh, the, uh, the highlight to define the top of the neighboring um, plan under it yeah i tend to do too much when i uh, explain oh sorry i got the blot my blotting paper is stand okay let's uh, let's see what we can do i just got ink from my my paper towel Okay, let's see. Just leave it alone. What, like, what can I do? Just leave it alone. It could be a happy accident, I wish. Okay, let's just do the, the rest of it and use a medium, medium grad of the ink to start with. So I, I'll start to draw this this rock as a backdrop for this in relationship to the to the tree in front that kind of uh, so you want to avoid the branch right but give a background see this is what we call the mao and song song means loose loose and the uh, um, and the um, um, hairy, right? Uh -huh. Fe feathery, feathery, feathery. Yeah, feathery. I got the word. Mao means a feathery, like a like a hairy, fe feathery. Yeah, bristled kind of bristled. Yeah. Well, I think it's still a little dry, right? Yeah, yeah. It's if you're too pressure. wet, it will it's be no pressure. hair. If I if I press and uh, the same brush, you know, I can make it uh, without reloading. You can see I can make it uh, solid. I go slow. I use the tip. I can uh, you know I can dot 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 that make it solid. When I go loose, I just you know use kind of uh -huh. um, less pressure. Yes, you see. 
that, that's that, that's the trick i think so thank you yeah you you need to um sometimes you see this a uh, lot of course it's because he used the brush like a like a claw and you can use light and then you use a little if you're not sure you start from light and then if you want to do, um, you can go back but not exactly repeat you can you can use a little dark just to kind of um, add it add a little bit just barely touching it Yeah, just concentrate on the relationship of the. Remember, I mentioned the word my teacher uh, talked about the chu, the chu, uh, uh -huh. the chu. Yeah, the, here is the chu. See, this is the chu right here, right? You can identify that uh, seal script chu. Yeah. Yeah. He he, he learned uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, secret is not um, documented anywhere. <laughs> Um, and until recently, I found on internet uh, a website uh, by Japanese uh, uh, Southern Nang Nanga, Nanga, Southern uh, painting, uh, some book in the, it's out of print already in the 40s. They have this called the uh, uh, stone nose. But we have this word in, uh, in the mustard. Seed garden, actually, yeah, I was wrong, but not exactly um, with the same idea. The stone nose is like this, this white part, you know, popping up. That's where um, the bone, you know, the first touch usually to start with, you know, the division line of uh, uh, something, right? Stone nose, it's called stone nose, where you start to measure things. Awesome. Okay. Then there are some steps. See, this is a stepping up. Uh, this is this is the lower. Let me make it even lower here. I think we started too high. That's why. We, oh, let me see. Yeah, a little bit. So this is a dry wa dry washing, <laughs> scratch uh, scratching or scampering. So this this is where. The cross foot of the crop. Look, you know, notice that you have to leave a nice shape. Um, I I think this part could be a little higher. So it's not like a flat, uh, a, uh, a uh, uh, smooth curve. It it has this kind of shape that goes there, 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 here, another down. So there's a wave, and then you can outline it. This this is quite important uh, to to keep. Maybe he he outlined it first. Let me do the whole shape. So this part starts from here and goes a little up. The the cloth moves from bottom towards the left, upper left. So the the head of the cloth moves like that. And then there's a little going around around the mountain area and you just go around the foot of that and you can draw a double line somehow um, not you repeat exactly you know like a, how we do the the wave of the the water same kind of uh, uh, stroke let me enlarge it if you See this kind of line? It's not even um, rounded. You know, some it, it could have quite zigzag. You know, like uh, corners, uh, angular. Some some kind of uh, W shape here. Uh, but we need to draw the large picture before the smaller ones. So I draw this chi. This this is what we call the the chi, right? Breath. This is a very important concept. So I, I draw this uh, shape like a cloud, and then this a little bit waving, just like a, a little section of the water. 
brush, uh, the wave brush we learned. And this nice cloud, we need to, if we miss it, you can, you can, you can redraw with the, I mean, you can redefine with the, the shape here with the, but you, you can just remind yourself, you know, the, to, to uh, paint when you paint the remote mountain where you end. So that's the uh, general shape of this uh, cloud. And you can draw a little, just like a, a belt, kind of, you know, the Chinese belt dance, that kind of thing, belt, yeah, dancing belt. Okay, and uh, now let's do the cliff. This, uh, this cliff part. Uh, you can still add, you know, a lot of uh, details later. Um, just, uh, I, I tend to use less and less ink, but not too light because um, it's medium, but basically a little lighter, I think, or drier maybe. You can make this a lot darker. I cannot go lighter than this because it's, it's kind of too light. I can go back to enhance it, not wet in wet. You cannot change it, but it's good to start with light. Huang Gongwang said that, right? The Yan Master has a book on the secret of the mountain. Now I need to, to, to know where the cliff, the viewpoint is. Okay, let me look at the whole picture. I don't need to look at detail. I just need to control that. Um, so it's about here, right? Let's see how far is that? Beyond this, uh, okay, here. So I, I, I draw a line roughly from this uh, foot. So not too far, actually. That would be too far. Uh, so you have, it's better to start from the foot to measure it. So it's not very far, it's right here, going up and up there. So it's about this far looks like far because the perspective maybe. So just a slant. And uh, there's a little um, platform there, a flat platform that continues um, behind, behind this rock, you know, just, it's like a, where you come, the driveway. And then um, this, side of that drive, the slope is a narrow slope. And in the, in the uh, uh, poem inscription, he said it's a narrow passage. And uh, so suddenly it become the, uh, uh, leave a space for the poet. They're going down and then go a little bit curve going down, generally going down, yeah, and it has some wave. And there is a little um, cliff there on the other side, that's very important. Okay. Just a little, just a little suggestion there. That, that thing creates depth and interest. Okay, so you can use the, um, because I, I want to show you, you can use the tip, uh, hold the straight, you know, tip center stroke. And uh, here I use, I push the brush, I can use a larger brush. You can use a, a, a paper to test the, the water, the color. Okay. So you can see my tip, my, brush. So this, look, look at the, the shape of the clouds and the, this rock, almost identical, but this one has more angular turns, maybe a little bit um, more angular, right? This, this is a cliff goes all the way down, basically, like that. And, uh, and you can push up or push down. I push up because uh, I want to show you so just kind of push, push there. Pushing means uh, 
like this is pushing, this is dragging, pushing to get the, the, the texture of the rock. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, use a large brush really easy to to get the area covered very quickly. And uh, there's a, a cloud on the other side of of the cliff. Let me show you. Okay, this is the head the head, the front of the cloud. So this is quite abstract, you know, um, but notice the chi is the same like um, uh, the low, the one down below. So where where it arises is, is lower, is going up, right? So in Chinese painting, we, we, we do with we more, you know, it's like a, Western artists pursue the move, uh, the uh, light. We pursue the movement of uh, energy. So this is a, a typical example of that energy. So it goes, see so that, that's the kind of general motion of the and uh, something like that. That's another um, another rising part. So it kind of disperse. Uh, and you can add a fine line. Let this line a little, it doesn't matter, you know, he, if you look at his uh, line quality, it's not very um, professional, it's amateur. We call it the amateur school because, but his uh, idea, his, uh, uh, we call the chi of a scholar, scholar chi, a book chi. Shu Juan Qi means a book. Um, the, the smell of book, <laughs> you might say. He can smell the book because he is well um, educated. He knows uh, the rules and the principles. The principles. Okay, this is too dark. Let me just blot it with a clean paper. It should be absorb absorbent paper. I use a, a cotton uh, paper towel, but make sure it's a clean one. Now I, I, I just use a very light ink to, uh, there might be a little gradation, so the front could be a little darker, a little darker. So my brush started with uh, the, the, the um, top, you see the shape of it, okay. So it's it's very angular shape. It's like a xia gui. Remember, uh, you can use water to um, soften the, the the bottom part. I, I think because I use water in the bottom of the brush, I don't need that. I just concentrate on the tip. Uh, you can you can do it like uh, two steps. One on the left side is a slant a stroke, like a uh, two down and uh, a little slope. Because this is a size the paper, you have to do it fast. Otherwise, you cannot combine two strokes. And uh, just use the bottom of the brush. Because it's lighter uh, to draw this, uh, this softer side. Uh, there's still another small peak there, and you can add a little water if you like to lighten it. And you can add more water to this side. Okay, it goes quite steep down. Like mine is a little sl uh, too slow. I just, okay, this peak should be a little up, so you can still change a little bit that angle should be a little, a little stronger. <clears throat> but don't repeat too much. If you do that, start to make a fuzzy edge. Um, so that that goes there from to there. This so this part should be done after this. You know, it's the same as this to the foot of that. And then uh, now that the other side, 
is the closer one. Actually, uh, we add a little bit ink. Uh, there's actually this mountain goes all the way here to the left. See, that's that's the let's do this. So we should use the same ink from here to here. I believe it's uh, probably not. So here is another peak. Um, you can you can make the dark one first because it could be the light one behind. So the, the principle is the the one in the front first. So this clear relationship. If you this is not really very clear. That's uh, um, but you know because the distinction between dark and the darker and the lighter ink, it, we know this part is in front of the distant one. So this one, just a cliff that goes a little higher than, yeah, so this is, I tried to just do it in one stroke. Can I do it? Okay. Oh, this, this is another little peak. But see, this is a odd shape. When that happens, uh, we don't say it's, uh, uh, you know, it's not natural, right? So you have to make, don't make arbitrary shapes of the clouds, you know, so that's, That's why you need to observe, you, know, you need to follow the principles of uh, yin yang and the, uh, how things works, how water works, how um, cloud moves. Okay, if you know the principle, you can create, uh, you can, you feel that you have the freedom of uh, creation, just like nature itself. That's the idea of, uh, you know, listening to the natural rhythm. Okay, so this is lighter. It's same as this layer. This is darker. Okay. And we still have some detail to do, but I would add the figure and we'll finish uh, this painting with some mustards. So the mustard, it's dark, right? The figure is also dark, but uh, I think the the. Uh, let me see if I have a detail. Yeah. Um. Okay. So use medium ink to start with uh, the face. There's a half circle, a less half, just a curve. Uh, I, I better <laughs> wear my glasses now. So. I just use the same brush. People have probably used the same. And I know the figure is uh, standing out. Uh, there's a there's an um, inscription on a rock on a peak of uh, Huangshan, the Guangmingding, uh, the bright uh, peak of uh, Huangshan. It says uh, uh, something like, "I am the peak." You know, when you arrive, the peak. You're higher than a mountain, right? Liu Hai Su wrote that, an, an artist who had lived 97 years old and uh, uh, climbed Huangshan maybe 12 times in his life. Um, so this, see the the west of this figure is higher than the. Uh, let's just do the. A lot of people start from the head. Um, I was that from the maybe from middle of the the body, so maybe just do the sleeve, the 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 arm. That's above the uh, rock, right? And then I draw this little large sleeve, and uh, his rope of uh, the scholar rope. There's a split. Okay. Then the the, the west 
it's it's almost yeah it's more uh, higher than the this is right there it's high high right uh belt is higher than the, the belt we wear today and then the the shoulder is kind of high his old man's so shoulder is quite um high then the, like that okay and then um the face it's a half, a little half, less than half circle in, in the same color. Then I use dark to dot the hair. A little, um, actually you can do the light first, then add uh, dark, I think that's, uh, but don't overdo it, you know, just a suggestion. It could be, it could wear a little, a little cup thing, you know, little fabric on top. Anyway, don't have to dis, uh, do it to, to de detail. And there's a um, staff, walking stick, going from this side and crossing. It, it's okay to smear, I think you can see that it's crossing. He, he's, he's not using it, he's arrived, you know, so just point like uh, behind it, behind him. Yeah, that's, that's it. Ah, I think my problem is um, I made the hot hair too, too tall, so it's looking down. Um, but it's okay, you, you look, in the poem he says he look near and far. So mine is looking near, not far. Let me see if I can change the hair a little. Lower, maybe I don't know. I can't do it. Um, maybe ah, I think I'm making him to look up by point by making the ear or something there. Okay, so my my papers start to bleed because the the paper is it does smear, you know. Okay, now I, we're going to do the dots in dark, pure ink. And you can use a, a large brush if you like, or the mustard brush. Let's see which one works best. I got this ink from the, the calligraphy class. So it's a little bit dry. Let's see which one works. Uh, I will save this group later. I just do something maybe I important groups first. Yeah, let's do the this this part first. Okay, let's say this one. So <clears throat> the dots should be used to make up things like here. I see. Um, something missing, I, you know, I, I know it's going to be dots, so you can, you can add them. This one, the large ones. Or you can use a mop shape. Maybe easier to get round, round the dots large ones. I already got some there, yeah. It's quite uh, like a little squarish, but round. Yeah, I try to find the, the combination, the best combination for uh, the speed, but uh, dots in in uh, in in calligraphy is described as the movement like a falling stone on the paper, you know, falling stone from the cliff. So it has this kind of downward 
pressure. And try to organize into concentrated uh, groups of uh, five or three, then disperse. And I, I, I use it to like uh, the artist does, you know, to, to create some uh, um, divisions or connections and uh, enhance the yin and yang, most importantly. So I, I don't, uh, if, we, if I put on the yang against the, the white, it will be the most important dots I want to show. Uh, it, you know, like here, maybe here on top, uh, we'll do that later. And uh, so basically it's uh, on the inside most likely. And there's a one that he, he used, maybe he tried to create some uh, variation here to I have a vertical dots. It's kind of, uh, it could be <laughs> an accident, you know, he just, uh, because brushes just touch the paper. Don't, don't, don't do that if you don't like it. There's a, there's a bar here, right? See this one? I don't have to copy that. But if you like, you, uh, if you think it's, uh, it's reasonable, there's a reason for that. You can, uh, you know, if you don't understand it, uh, leave it out. If you, if you understand what it's for, just do it, you know, as you understood. Okay, it could be wrong, but uh, it, uh, if you have an understanding, it should work. So let me just add a little water. This one, and th this group is kind of important, which uh, kind of communicate with the clouds here. Disperse, concentrate, disperse. Now the distance. Yeah. This paper kind of uh, smear, so it, it, if you keep uh, working wet onto wet, it will smear. You can add more later, if not enough. Yeah. That's... So some dots, uh, I will start from the center of this group. So if something wrong, you know, I, I cover it. But when you do this exposed one, you have to really make it uh, nice, around it. Um, shape like a little uh, mushroom I will say something okay so this one is uh, it's on top of the this peak that's important and just behind yeah just think about bushes and uh, uh, vegetation yeah that's I'm getting smaller when it gets to the distant level, it could be lighter too, not too much. Smaller is also good to separate the planes. See, this is a different plane, so you want to, uh, we can still use uh, <coughs> some makeup, you know, some structure. Uh, what we'll, we'll do the, the color wash or, or ink uh, wash later? You can do dry wash or, or wet wash to make the, sh uh, consolidate the shapes, forms. And now we just add the rhythm of uh, dots. And see, I, I, I dot around this, what we call the island, all in rocks, all in uh, lumps. Huang Gong Wang's uh, trademark. And Juran, he learned from the Juran. Okay, here we have some vegetation on the other side of the, the cliff. Just a, a little suggestion. And so, um, a little, see, a little detail can tell you your, your um, understanding of nature and what it is. If you put the the dots in, inside of this, uh, um, the, the pavement, <laughs> what do we call this, uh, platform, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, flat <coughs> parking lot, I would say, because I have the parking lot uh, painting, right? Um, 
it will make doesn't make sense. If you put it on top of that, it doesn't make sense because it, that means your tree is planted on the cement, you know, some rock, bare rock. So this is something uh, grow from the you know like uh, the site of the the other site that shows the um, the reason uh, the principle of uh, your understanding of uh, um, things, not just uh, not just copy the strokes, you know, you, you really understand what you're doing. It's okay. You can divide a little bit. I, I'm going to add some uh, uh, more Chun or, you know, this is a dry wash, maybe cha. Cha means a scramble scr scr or it is an oil painting they call scramble, dry brush, bristle work, bristle um, stroke. But uh, in, in Chinese painting, maybe we could just, uh, oh, rubbing, that's the word, that's, I forgot. Rubbing, yeah, kind of rubbing. Um, but I don't see any really, uh, you know, some identifiable color. But you can you can use a little color in the in the brush. Let me just keep it to monochrome, chrome, just ink. So you, you basically you can fill in the blank with the with this. In between the dry brush, you can add some light light uh, brushes. It's the same kind of stroke, you know, just like uh, we did before. So on the shady part and separate the plants. So this this is was separate to two. Make sure that the dust is dry. Otherwise it may blur. Okay, and leave some white. That's very important, highlight. Highlight, yeah. So not not eliminate all. Okay, some rock. Uh, we want to create the contrast with the the white platform. So this actually become gray. So normally the 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 fanto is white, right? In Huang Gongwang's painting, many painting, not even with any shaping. But in this painting, because we want to cr to create this nice um, white and with the cloud, we try to eliminate all the other white. Okay, and you can add some more tree dots if you want. So, because if you keep on working on, you know, wet into wet, it will blur to, you know, it, um, lot, you will lose the shape of the stroke. And, but now you can, you can add more. So, uh, here, here's the, the principle is you don't finish in one step. You, you try to finish in three steps, maybe four or more. See, I can, Add more now. You know you can you can dot, you can add branches even now, but not when it's too wet, right? So that's uh, and just make this part more integral, dense with the. But if you you know leave some white, you have to sometimes indicate. Uh, the, the slope of rock behind or something. So we just block it with, a, with more uh, ink, just make it dense, opaque. Okay, so this is the dentist, the dent, 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 dense test. I don't know what's the term, most dense part. And uh, see the ground, we may have some trees. Yeah, it's uh, only uh, just a little bit. I'm sorry, too dark. So 
inside of the building. Okay, there is not much uh, happening on this side because the dots usually is where the attention is. So you want to, uh, you don't want to make a, a chaos, you know, everywhere. So you want to keep all goes from sparse and then concentrate gradually to the to the people to the figure. That's the focus of this this painting. And that's it, I think. Okay, I'm sorry I don't have time to do the flowers. I wish I had time. Um, it's a uh, uh, that yeah, but I I can maybe uh, share share with you some techniques uh, with the color painting. Do you um, need to color the cloud under the mountain on uh, the let's left? Let's do this one into into color, so we don't have to learn the technique from the other painting. So if we continue to work on this one to make the clouds white, uh, yeah, we can do many things. Uh, you can, you can, yeah, we, we need to color this part. This the kind of continuation of this. So you wet this part a little bit and then add a little ink. You can use me dot, you know, if you want to indicate some kind of trees there, but basically, this is the foot of that uh, that heel, all right. And uh, you can shape, you can you can do shading on along this, just like you did the the rock. You can sh you can um, you can shape sh you can wash the yin the inside to, to to squeeze out the foyer the yang, the light side. I think uh, don't overdo that, you know, just uh, uh, just the thing. Basically it's a uh, outlined. So you, you, you really define this by this line that goes, let me see, let me show you the detail. On the foot, they see this line goes over here. That kind of thing, uh, really. Just, if I don't like it, maybe just blur it. Okay, now uh, if I want to do the color, I, I would apply the vegetable color first, which is, uh, uh, you know, some kind of uh, transparent green. Hi, Henry. You use, uh, the one you just uh, painted, is that the, the cloud or the underneath is the cloud? I'm a little the white confused. is the cloud, right? Oh, this, okay. uh, the cloud is uh, uh, above and under. It's two two different uh, clouds here. Yeah, some, got it. You know, this is the same cloud. This is distant, little far. This is the cloud here. So uh, I will use a little indigo and a, a little bit yellow, maybe just um, bluish green to wash this tree a little bit. If you want, you know, some color. If you like some color, that, that's what uh, uh, he used on the other painting of the uh, the flowers, you know. And I use a little more white to do this lighter tree. Just uh, nothing uh, really change the, the bone of it, you know. Just a little color, aural kind of can go out a little bit. And uh, you can use a little. This is red wood, right? We can use a little little orange color, but not too much, I think just the uh, orange yellow. Just uh, uh, color is the guest. It's not the host, you know, just the, uh, yeah. So if you paint where you paint it, uh, above, above the area above you paint it and the area under your painted is cloud. What 
Okay, that's the mountain, right? What what do you painted is a mount is the part of the mountain? It's a mountain foot, uh, clouds uh, head, <laughs> where the okay. mountain and the and the, uh, okay, this he has a description of this painting in the poem. Um, it says Bai Yun Ru Dai, <coughs> clouds like a white okay. belt, okay. and Yang Shu. Round, round the the west of the cliff. Okay, got it. So that's the foot of the, of the mountain. You just yeah. painted it on the left, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I I add a little bit uh, color um, to the ink, just a, a gray, um, blue, green, very 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 pale. You know, just. Uh, Almost, uh, uh, I think it maybe on a ten to one to ten scale, maybe two, um, because of the the. So this is the true color. I think you have to look at. Uh, I I try to bring together this whole mass. Maybe leave just a little highlight. Highlight there, yeah, and you can use some brown to the foot of the mountain, or gray, a uh, yellow, kind of. I have some leftover color. I don't even need to spray some more. This is just from my last last class. Okay, so basically, this front I can use more warm color. I think. Uh, you can blend, always add ink. So it's a mixture of uh, ink and the color, just a little warm gray for for this one. So it's kind of like that. Lighter than that. You can leave some white, unpainted white. So some, some uh, along the top, of the plan to be kept. And this blob, blob my nightmare, let me just put in some amber, maybe make it a new color. I don't know if that works or make it worse. So don't, don't uh, just ignore it. I think <laughs> when that happens, you can just, you have to, just ignore that. Okay, now, now I get some greenish color and uh, maybe add a little, a touch of, yeah, that's a little bit too much. Add some muted with ink. Okay, and uh, so this has the most vegetation, this, this part, vegetation. And this bark has some cold, cold, cool, cold uh, here, and we can we can add a little, little. Um, oops. Oh, this is a nice kind of color from the sumi. It's a indigo kind of color. So I can use this for pines, I think. Just a little bit blue. But it's very easy to change the tone of this uh, poetic painting. If you add too much color, it becomes the other painting. What we call the, the small, small uh, blue and the green painting. This is uh, um, I, I try to do the chen jiang, the <coughs> indigo and the amber painting. Amber, amber, amber and in indigo, we call it the chen jiang. The light, uh, light brown and blue is a complementary color, right? Complementary color. Warm and cold. Yeah. And you can have a little. 
this is brown on the light part maybe. Usually I do the the uh, uh, brown on the on the uh, shady part on the foot, and then this time I I I use brown on the top maybe. Uh, okay, this is a little brown, yellow, light. Okay, just a little bit. See, after it dries, uh, it's a it's about the color like this one maybe. You see, that that's the kind of kind of intensity you will get. I got a little. I actually I enhanced it last night. Otherwise, you won't really see it. Uh, it's a little purplish gray, some blue, some brown. So you got uh, red, yellow, and green. Okay, so I will use light against uh, dark here. So just a little yellowish amber, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Now, um, it's time to to sign. <clears throat> uh, before that, I just add a last touch on this building. This is a, the, the blue tile against a white wall. I think you can use a little brown, but we got already got brown on the rock. You don't want to repeat that. So maybe just a little touch of uh, brown on the pillows and the uh, wood structure not on the on the entire wall of the, the building I think something like that and maybe inside inside the gate a little bit and you can highlight the line with a little brown that's all okay that's uh, I wish you can see it uh, yeah it's basically it's still wet, uh, white wall or not a brown wall. Um, that's it, I think. Let's see, this uh, brown there. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'll, I'll make it as simple just to sign the name of the painting. I think it's a poet on the mountains. It's an English translation. I think um, Forgot about the Chinese name for this. Ping, do you have any idea what uh, this uh, painting? Point on, point on the cliff. <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, Oh, I, I know where I can find the official name of this. It's called Zhang Li Yuan Tiao. Gaze into the distance. Uh, with, a, with the stick, <laughs> holding a stick, holding a stick and the gaze uh, at a distance. Huh? Gazing. Gazing into distance, right? That's a difficult to uh, wood. I mean, the character is very, very difficult. So I, I think the uh, this will block the view of the <coughs> uh, the figure. So we better do it here. But it's kind of a wet. Um, let's see. I think this probably the best, best part to. Let me use my iron. Okay. Uh, Um, you can you can use a piece of uh, paper just to, in case there's 
the dust on the on the iron. Iron is a friend of uh, artists these days. You know, you can, uh, you could have, I could have stopped to the smear, but it's not really serious. But you can see, um, you can you can iron it right away if you if you want to stop it from uh, evolving further. You know, because the the paper has a delay um, to keep smearing or. Or uh, gets uh, changing, you know. If you want to stop it, just iron it. You now you can you, you can see the true color of it, um, because sometimes you know you cannot really tell um, the the color until it dries. So you, you need to let it dry. Oops. Uh, should I do a little color on the garment? Oh, I got some pink. I want some add some red to the painting. So we got yellow, blue, and red. Guys wearing a pink shirt, huh? very different, pure intellectual kind of. And you can also paint the skin color with a, just a little um, um, umber, maybe a little yellow, but not necessarily. Yeah, just a touch of it. Okay, now I sign. Zhang Li Yuan Tian. Li means uh, the the can, the uh, <coughs> bamboo or wood can. I think. Zhang Li Yuan Tian. I'll just write on my mis uh, my <laughs> blurb. That will cover it for sure. See, very easy <laughs> to to uh, to fix. If you keep working on this blob, you know you would you you would ruin your your mood basically to start. With. So you you want to ignore it, and then you it will you'll find a solution, believe it or not. Later, so just ignore it if you have a uh, accident like this. Don't give up. Keep working, and then you will find a solution later. Yuan, ah, this this is a word familiar to those who have learned from a calligraphy, calligraphy class. <coughs> Zhang means uh, staff. Uh, this is the the material, I think. Also the this word meaning the uh, the stick made of bamboo or, or wood. Yuan uh, tiao. Meaning this is yuan meaning distant, right? Tiao means watch. Watch into the distance. <coughs> okay, and also. Ling Central or Fang Central, Fang. Shen Shitian. We use his uh, artist name. Shi Tian. And the year of uh, this is a special date. We must uh, <coughs> write the whole thing. So Gen Zi. Zhongqiu, uh, mid autumn. I write my 
full name Henry Lee, Xiao Hui Lee. Okay. Let me move this. Uh, okay. Um, I need to have one more character because this ends exactly the same length. And you can write um, paint or, or, um, or wrote. So either way, I just say painted. Or you can write G. Um, G means uh, inscribed, maybe better. Ji, yeah. Because I got, already got the verb, fang, mimic. Mimicking, mimicking Sen Shi Tian. Um, yeah, this is painted. Okay, so now I can add a seal on the left side. You can put it under it if you, if you want also. Under it might be more interesting. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the composition of gravity. Okay. So, okay. Um, that's all for today. Um, I, I wish you enjoyed the, uh, the class and uh, um, I would like to see your painting later, maybe in the in online class. Oh yeah, someone asked you to, to have this fence. I will definitely uh, send you a picture. I, I colored the, the, the car in, in um, in this uh, fashion, the for the you know Volkswagen color, there's a Beetle car. Is that nice? And I colored this figure with pink. That's just my my um, personal touch on this painting. I tried to to you know make it more um, contemporary. Maybe that's my effort. I wish everybody. I'd like to see the the painting, you know, uh, not just the museum piece, but I think it's in Kansas you know, somewhere in, in this country. This painting in, in um, a museum in, in the U.S. This painting is uh, found on the uh, website everywhere on the internet. You can, I'll send you um, my copy of this, and I would like to see your interpretation. Okay. Okay, thank you, Henry. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you very much. This is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, wish mine, I wish mine looked like yours. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> thank you. Darling. Thank you. Darling. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before you close down, I wanted to show you Vine from last week. It's not finished. Uh huh. Let me see. But I want, it's okay. very hard to do on the gold. This is the gold uh -huh. paint. On the gold, uh-huh, oh, I see. It's uh -huh. on the gold. Uh-huh, yeah. You do a lot of layers. Oh, uh, the gold is uh, non-absorbent, yeah, I understood. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a Gumby painting. Uh, you have to do a lot of layers or use a very thick <laughs> opaque paint to cover it. it uh, also let me ask you. Um, because it takes a lot of layers, yeah. when I go to frame it or, you know, um, oh. add, um, do I spray it with like a... Um, no, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to spread on the front, maybe on the back. If you if you spread, keep it from smearing. Would that keep it? Yeah, from don't use any water. If you if you use dry mounting, would be the best. If you um, uh, if you want to make it flat, so you maybe spread on the back, 
and then you uh, iron it on the front. Maybe uh, you can iron on the back, but it would probably okay. You can iron on the back to make it flat and transfer it to, to the uh, support with a, a thicker support. I, I will use because okay. this finger is kind of uh, st uh, thick. So you want to use a thicker support for, for that. Yeah. What kind? What kind of support would I use? Um, you know, we we have the plain backing paper designed for mounting, and you can use a regular watercolor paper or, um, or some kind of board. Okay, a board or watercolor paper, you said. Yeah. Okay, thicker paper. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try to finish it this week. <laughs> yeah, take your time. There's no hurry. Um, you can always uh, um, yeah, just take your time. Anyway, um, I try to paint on the the gold in cicada wing paper. Uh, uh on the back, I th I think that it works as well. Yeah, if you paint on the front, it's also uh, good. You know. Uh, if you um, Chicago wing is is a good uh, paper for for this kind of. If you look at uh, one of the class I did with, uh, uh, I think it's twenty nine. You can check uh, Wang Yanqi's uh, colorful landscape. I I did on Chicago wing on the front. It works very nice. Yeah, Chicago wing is a good paper to do landscape, colorful landscape too. Yeah. Yeah, and also on Lan Ying's uh, painting, uh -huh. I noticed the dot is not uh, above the contour. It's uh, around the contours. Is that oh. right? Or I'm uh, wrong? That's maybe exceptional. It depends on you know the context. I I, I sometimes I th I dot inside the contour, um, uh, but in general, you know. Um, it should be outside, but sometimes if it's inside, that's uh, it's very attractive. It's an important part. You want to be very serious. Um, it could be in, inside. It it could be the trees in front of the uh, the lid part. You know the young part, and then it, yeah, if it's on the on the outside, it means on the back of the front plane. But if it's on the front, it, it could be. Um, you know, it, it, it don't take the, any rule uh, restrictive. It, it, there's always, the, you know, to know the rule and then break the rule. And you should have a reason to break that. Uh, you have your okay. own reason to break it. Yeah. And the question on Lan Ying, you mm -hmm. said that he made uh, some uh, invention, right? So you said that in Ming's uh, painters, he, uh -huh. He is the one with the most invasion. So, what's his um, invasion? What is, you know, okay. the style? He, he's not, uh, uh, Ming Dynasty basically is the revivalism, re revivalism. Re re revivalism means uh, to just copy, uh, revival the, the ancient art. Uh, everybody has their own style or invention, I think. So, Lying is mostly. Uh, has to do with the golden uh, and the, you know the, the the landscape I copied the uh, the, the white clouds with the red tree is famous with and uh, his um, his if you if you just go through the the album I think uh, I didn't post those he, he can do any style of uh, the uh, song and yuan dynasties. Uh, he always attributed to those masters, but just like Shen Zhou, he has his own uh, signature style. But just his brushwork is different than anybody. <coughs> I think he, he's very um, professional, I, I will say. It's near, near perfect kind of, uh, not, not, uh, not very uh, random or or amateurs. <coughs> Let me get some water.
Yeah, he's Good. more serious. I think serious painter. He 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 um he also learned from Shenzhou. He he can do uh, this kind of work as well, like the one uh, with two uh, two monks, a monk and the priest. Yeah, that that's a typical scholar amateur style. But uh, most of his work are um, maybe on silk. I would say. But you, you rarely see any work by Shenzhou on silk. He, he always painted on paper. And he started as a um, amateur style. And he became famous after mid age. He started to do large works and using large brush work uh, strokes. And uh, he even, uh, he had a lot of imitators uh, when he's alive, but he doesn't care. Sometimes he signed his, uh, the, the, you know, forgeries if somebody, uh, there's a there's a story saying a poor scholar uh, brought a painting uh, copy of his Shenzhou to show him and he he, um, he he modified it he improved it and he signed he signed it as authentic so the guy can sell and buy food for his uh, family so he he's a very uh, you know compared to Nying maybe in Shenzhou is a very uh, not care about uh, like it's Wen Zhenmin, you know, not um, not care about uh, uh, the marketing part, mm -hmm. but he 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 does have a lot of uh, uh, demands in the market. So he he's uh, uh, James. Can you mention he's he's not uh, sure about a copy, you know, forgery. You know? So there's a lot of forgery when he was alive. It's in the document also, you know he. He uh, he is a very successful uh, commercial artist. Also, yeah, he's also a good teacher. He's a teacher of uh, Muen Zhenmin, the other four of Ming grandmasters, uh, Shen Wen, Shu Tang, right? Uh, also, he taught to Tang Guohu or Tang Ying. So, two uh, two of the other four masters of Ming Dynasty was actually his uh, disciples. Uh, directory, um, and then he taught another master uh, in flower and birds painting called mm -hmm. Chen Chun Chen Bo Yang. You know, he's the same famous as the Xu Wei Xu Jingpin. So um, he, he's he's a much more uh, influential than Lain. Lain somehow is kind of a commercial artist. I, I will say he he's a professional artist all his life. He does a lot of work um, for, for, for sale. I mean. So you can see the kind of, uh, a Tambo who is another extreme, if you look, study, he's kind of like a uh, Lan Ying. He's a, he's, he's, he grew up in a merchant family. He's good at marketing, but uh, and meanwhile, he's a very talented poet. So he gets inside of a literary circle with the Shenzhou and what it means to become part of the, uh, the literary group. And also Chiu Ying. Chiu Ying, you know, he had a painting show in, in mm -hmm. LA uh, Museum. It's, it's currently closed, I think. So is somebody here uh, visited the uh, Chiu Ying. Mm -hmm. He's a very professional artist, but he also belongs to the women's group for some reason, because the, maybe the he lives in the area, you know. He may be uh, friends of those uh, uh, these are these artists, but he can also do Zhang uh, copied one of his with a uh, very literary style. Anyway, so um, Lain is not a literary painter, but he could do occasionally some literary work. But he, he's more into the heavy color or, or uh, green and blue style, I think. You can see his uh, waterfall, his, it's very, um, Flat, you know, just like a like a piece of silk hanging there. It's, mm -hmm. it's not. It, it doesn't have the soul as Shenzhou. If you read the Shenzhou, he's a philosopher and read his poem. Um, he and you understand what I mean. Lying does have poem also, but but his painting is more commercialized. I think that's the difference between uh, the two schools we talk about the Zhuo school. Zhe school is also called the Wu Lin school. You know, it's, everybody actually has their own, uh, but 
basically they follow the, the tradition from the Southern Song dynasty. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so your school is more literati? Every, pardon me? What's uh, the question? Jiu school is more like a scholars? Jiu school, uh, school, no, Jiu school is more professional artist, like a commercial uh, and a court. Court. Okay. Uh, so, it started as a court, but uh, later Lai Ying was not a court painter. Uh, but he, maybe you know, some people said he's mislabeled. He he, he's, he's more diversified than uh, his uh, predecessors. His uh, uh, like Dai uh, Jing and Wu Wu Wei. Uh, the, this 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 uh, early uh, early school. They're more of uh, uh, song style, but. Uh, Lai Ying could do every, uh, you know, style like Huang Gong Wang, especially, and just like Shen Zhou, he also learned from Shen Zhou. So um, they are not very different uh, to me. So that's why uh, I think he, you know, I I, I uh, introduced him because I'm I, I'm thinking about uh, the uh, the next one uh, class will talk about the orthodox theory and the practice. Of Dong Qi Chang, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Dong Qi Chang. I don't know if he looked down on Lai Ying, but he praised uh, Dong Qi Chang. Maybe a contemporary of Lai Ying, mm -hmm. so uh, they both maybe uh, favor the Southern School. I, you know, Lai Ying uh, or Zhe School is a Northern School. That, that's the main difference in Dong Qi Chang's uh, uh, two uh, North and and the South division. You know the difference between the two, right? It's like a Zen uh, energy of a North uh, Patriarch and the South Patriarch. One emphasize on Southern environment and more like a, uh, the, the moment he, uh, Shen Zhou described, you have a Zen moment and you carry it on. Uh, that's the attitude. Um, the, for the professional artists, they don't care, they just copy. And you see a lot of uh, Ming Dynasty, even today, I have a lot of copy actually. Uh, next time I'll show you the difference. I have a lot of production from the manufacturers in Beijing and in Suzhou, in other cities. Um, and they have no soul, right? They do it like a manufacturer worker. They do the same style, like uh, just good at its does. There's no soul in, in it. Okay. Yeah. Just um, the I don't know, maybe I missed something. So the Zhe school is more- uh, Northern school. Yeah. Northern school, right? Northern school and, is more technique oriented. Okay. I, I, it, I, 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 doesn't, I doesn't mean they don't have any poetic, uh, you know, every, I mean, comparative, co comparative to uh, the scholar amateur school, they're, they're less um, poetic or calligraphic it's more uh, like a procedural painting, like a gongmi painting, so to speak. Uh, okay. So, so you go through, a, yeah, uh -huh. there's, there's no, not much uh, room for breaking the rules. There, there's, there are rules. That's why Japanese artists like them. Japanese like them because they love rules. Uh -huh. And we don't like the rules. The scholars don't like the rules, yeah. So, they okay. break rules. Okay. so oh. scholar is a, a southern style. Is that what it is? Southern style, yeah. It's more spontaneous. And Japanese um, people they like the kind of uh, spontaneous uh, professional style. So become yeah. Zen. Then uh, in Ming Dynasty, become very. Um, look at the the, the book uh, image of the image of the uh, uh, painting by. It, what is the uh, image of a uh, mind by Fong Wen Fong? Um, you'll see a discussion on, on, on the just school and the, the uh, uh, because in late Ming, by the time of Lai Ying, because he is excellent because he, he has influence from scholar amateur school and had this uh, uh, liter literary tradition in it. Uh, but his contemporary just school Painters become, um, you know, just a play of uh, 
uh, ink and the skill show off uh, your very rough. Um, they would do branches very unreasonably. Um, then kind of, you know, they just, it's kind of uh, like that, you know, some something with no um, restraint of, uh, how to say, there's a good example called the shi, some someone met with last name shi, shi something, two two word uh, name, in his painting and in his book he, he used it as an example of that kind of a trend towards a very, uh, very simplified um, or rough, sketchy kind of a, a professional painter. So that that's a. Uh, that's why they don't last very long. They're, so the um, Shenzhou and the other Visrati painting uh, rose to dominant the the rest of the um, the history of uh, art in the next three hundred years uh, until today in, in Taiwan. You know they they they, they continued the, the Wu school after the nineteen forty nine. They taught the four the the uh, wood school in, in in the universities, right? Okay, so, so Shenzhou is literati. Uh, yeah, Shenzhou, Shenzhou definitely a literati. He he write po great poem, great poet, and he, he write essays. He's a uh, um, write books. Yeah, uh, you can read the the painting, the essay. Uh, I think there's a. Um, um, there's in the Chinese translation of the Feng, Feng Wen's book has a Chinese text in it. It's a, Feng, it's a, Wen. Mm -hmm. Feng Wen. Yeah. Is the, Feng Wen is the former, um, he died two years ago, I think. It was the, the Metropolitan Museum uh, director uh, and also mm -hmm. the, the Princeton University founder of the, the, uh, the Chinese uh, or ancient um, Art history, Feng Wen. He he was a, a young artist in Shanghai before he come to this country in four, late forties to study physics. Then uh, he gave up physics to become an art historian, and later become uh, the founder of the ancient uh, section of uh, the Met collection. He, yeah, he's he's, uh, he's very famous art scholar. Oh, okay. kind, kind of. But the Zen is it's normally by heart, right? Zen painting is more by heart, not by rule, right? So uh, that is not the uh, scholar style. So that should be more literati. No, know? Zen, uh, okay, there are two different uh, Zen, um, one is uh, the uh, Zen monks. Basically, okay. Zen painting, uh, uh, you know, mostly have to do with the imagery, like uh, the 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 uh, Damo pa painters, uh, the, uh -huh. the lead, uh, figure paintings, right? But they do some kind of on the side. Uh, they they try to repeat um, some of the. The themes like the the six uh, sceneries of Xiaoxiang or something like you know like the descending keys, thing, very um, imaginary themes. Uh, yeah, it's part of their meditation maybe practice and also just uh, uh, like when they do Buddhist Buddhist Dharma or poetry, they would do this like a. Um, chanting the name of Buddha, they do it every day. They will do thousands of them, maybe just repeat it. So their spontaneity is also based on repeating. And you, you can see the Shashu uh, uh, Kapoku broken ink landscape. I can find you at least five version of the same scene, right? There might be 5,000 there. They repeat a lot, maybe a little different. Yeah, literally does the same thing, but uh, they, they don't really emphasize on the the uh, random effect. Okay, uh, it's more um, 
like writing writing uh, the landscape, the feelings of uh, of it, and it's more um, more um, twin to the nature's uh, laws. Okay, so uh, and then even this uh, this this scholar, I I I think I did I quote the most famous Zen poem in Chinese history is by Wang Wei. He is also the founder of the Southern School. Okay, he is the greatest Zen poet. Mm -hmm. Did you read that line I, I sent you? Uh, because I think that illustrates the Luo Hua Shi, the other painting I was uh, planned to, to do, the other option. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that he summarized into, into uh, one, Kong Shan Wu Ren, Shui Liu Hua Xie, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, Wang Wei's most famous poem, can you name that? It's called the Xing Yi Wu, mm -hmm. the Magnolia Slope. And I, 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 I had the translation from uh, uh, the best translator today is uh, David Hinter, all right? Let me, let me read that. Let me just show you the translation. Mm -hmm. And if you can sense that Zen, mood in this poem, you will understand the Zen of uh, Shenzhou's thing. It's, it's nothing to do with the approach. It could be broken ink, it could be elaborated style, but uh, Zen is the um, uh, attitude, I think. Let me show you the, the poem if you want to read this now. Yeah, like a Zen painting, but I think it's a harder. Looks like um, easy, but okay. Zen, Zen painting is doesn't have to be spontaneous. It could be. This painting is Zen because I I think it's, it's an illustration of this poem, Lotus Blossom, you know, because the shape of the magnolia we call it the the, the wood lotus, yeah. lotus blossom, a drift out across the tree tops. I don't know this word, uh, a drift out across the treetops. Flotten crimson calyxes among mountains. So these two words, just uh, two lines just describe this scene, right? Mm -hmm. And then here's the, uh, the, the philosophy of Zen. Jian hu ji wu ren, a home beside this stream, quite no one. Here, scattered, scattered, open and falling, a blooming and falling. So uh, it's like an orchid in the sacred mountain, the flower comes and go, uh, doesn't care. It's a careless attitude, whether there's some, you appreciate there's some, you know, some, um, being or not being. Uh, yeah, the viewer. <laughs> Whether there's a viewer, the, the, the word uh, just uh, uh, there, you know, the flower is there. So this this painting you can see has the falling, it is a flower tree, flowering tree. You can see there's a little remaining uh, petals on this uh, left tree, on, on right tree, there may be a couple of them uh, here. See that? Yeah, the most of the flowers are in the water. Yeah. Is that, yeah, see this water and on this uh, ground. I wish this figure is not there. That's why I didn't paint it. Because uh, uh, I, in my mind, there should be no, no, no people. That becomes Zen, the emptiness. Yeah, Zen. So if I do this painting uh, this time, I would, I would eliminate that. I'll put a pavilion. I'll put a pavilion there, empty pavilion there. Or, or uh, you know, an empty um, house there. So I, I didn't, I didn't uh, really uh, have that image yet. Uh, but I, I'll try to do it maybe after the class. And you can try that with the. So my assignment is to paint a Zen painting based on the inscription. I mean, the translation of Zen, uh, Zen poem by Wang Wei. Um, you can do it in any style if you like. Okay. Okay, I'll try that. Uh, on this painting, the where the river river goes, 
from under the bridge and uh, comes back and uh, going down again. It's kind of. Uh, oh, I think you're thinking too much like uh, science. <laughs> like <this. laughs> no, you told me to understand it. Don't yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. The, the certainly, it, it, the, the, yeah, the water is, is behind this. Uh, Park, you will say a uh, little, uh, little um, rocks. Rock. Mm -hmm. So you can, I can see. Um, yeah, good question. So it could be that uh, the water goes from, you know, where you stand, where the viewer stands, uh, down um, behind. But uh, here, I, I think. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that that's a that's a very good question. Um, yeah, that that. Because usually we indicate the source of war water in the fall. Maybe the water from, comes yeah, from the below in the left. Yeah, yeah usually the, the source of uh, water is the mountain, the Gao Shan Liu Shui, right? High right. mountain flowing water, that's the idea. So it, it might be uh, in the clouds, so we don't really see that. That, that happens. So uh, it should be in, in the ancient mind, you know, but uh, I think. Uh, you can, in, uh, uh, yeah. This 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 movement is from um, back to to the front. So it, it should be the water should be flowing from the top, the mountain, uh, to 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 here to this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, th this is the Kongshan. So it's a empty mountain. That's a Zen painting, so it's just a symbolism. I think doesn't um, have the naturalism of a Song Dynasty painter. Yeah, it's a it's a typical. So there's no uh, natural law here. It's uh, the expression of uh, feeling. It's a mind landscape, you might say. But okay. to me, I I didn't have that question. I I I just noticed the. Um, the falling flower, because the, the, the title is the flower, falling flower uh, poem, poet. Uh, I mean, falling flower, uh, the idea of falling flower, falling blossom. The poem, yeah, the poem of falling blossom, because this is a long, very long strip. Um, with uh, with many sections of inscriptions, you know, like uh, um, yeah, he 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 has several poems. He he did the uh, last one in age of eighty. By the way, he is a very filial son. Um, he took care of his mother until she died at the age of 99. And uh, uh, so he was 80 years old. One year before he died himself, this was done. Huh. He, he inscribed it. Maybe he did the painting earlier, but he wrote something at the uh, age of 80. He died at 81, one year after his mother died. Um, and uh, his full job is taking care of his mother. That gives him excuse from many summers from the emperor or from local officials to get into the politics. So, so he, he could stay away from politics and concentrate on painting and the poetry and literary uh, pursuits, you know, with uh, uh, Wen Zhenming also wrote, there's a lot of work you can read, you know, I didn't have time to study all these poems. It has to do with uh, this uh, painting, and a lot of a lot of uh, uh, poems written by his uh, contemporaries and later um, characters or viewers, maybe. So this is a very typical example of a poetic painting and Zen painting, I think. But so you yeah, also like, call the. Literati painting. Yeah, right? this is called a literati because the amateur painter doesn't. I mean, not a, a professional artist. They don't. They don't care about the writing, right? They. Uh, oh, this is Yu Ying Hong. Okay, this is uh, his his own. No, not his uh, brush work. Yeah, this is uh, his own inscription. Is uh, 
Sankon empty mountain without people, flowing water with the falling petals, falling flowers. Yeah. So yeah. he painted a person who is, him. yeah, so he, he is the, you know. Yeah. yeah, this person could be his spirit uh, uh, being, yeah, spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this uh, rocks. Exactly where we started, right? In, in lesson one, yeah. See the three three strokes. Uh huh. Three sides, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I wish we had time to do this one. Uh, this this color could be on the back side of the paper. I'm not sure. Oh, actually, it's on the front, but very thin, opaque color after the uh, the the brown or a green on the. Yeah, so very thin opaque color. It's a, it's a very thin new mineral color. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, um, I'll let you go. See you next week, everybody. Uh, what kind of tree is that? What kind of blossom? Oh, this is magnolia. I I, I hope I, I I could be wrong. It could be any any blossom. Doesn't matter. It could mm -hmm. be um, any tree blossom, okay. but the, the poem I quoted is magnolia. You can you can make the leaf larger and look, but the the leaf just uh, uh, start to sprout in this uh, late spring, right? So this is uh, maybe still could be magnolia, yeah, or okay. dark wood if you like. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Henry. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye.